this is not okay in the least bit. And most of us would agree, advertising a night stay in a so-called slave cabin sounds distasteful at the least. How do I know that this is slave quarters? Well, they say it in the listing. This particular structure, the Panther Burn Cabin, is an 1830 slave cabin from the Panther Burn Plantation. New Orleans attorney Witten Yates so upset about the Airbnb ad, he shares his shock with the world on social media. Maybe you're thinking, okay, maybe this will give people insight on how enslaved people had to live, their living conditions. No, not at all. Clawfoot tub, running water, tile, you know, nice lighting fixtures, water, towels, dresser. The history of slavery in this country is constantly denied, and now it's being mocked by being turned into a luxurious vacation spot. Certainly not what you'd expect any kind of indentured servant to have. Comments condemning the ad came fast and furious. Airbnb, come to the front of the class immediately. How is this even approved? I am shocked someone thought this was a good idea and people are like, yeah, cool, let's stay there. Sounds fun. Some poked a little fun at the idea, saying, next Jordan Peele movie, the old inhabitants come back and bring pain to all the renters. No one survives. One said he sees no issue. If they want to rent it and people want to stay there, have at it. No skin off my nose. It was definitely skin off Airbnb's nose. The company has faced charges of helping foster gentrification and has had a problem with so-called party houses. Now this. Airbnb cut the listing and its owner. So who is this man who uncovered this Airbnb atrocity? Yes, he's an attorney, a Loyola law grad who specializes in entertainment and contract law. But here's something else we found on Wynn Yates. Reporting downtown, Winton Yates, Eyewitness News. Wynn Yates worked in TV, here reporting on the removal of the Robert E. Lee statue in downtown New Orleans. Here's something else. He has a great aunt who owns a slave home, but he doesn't say if she rents it out. We couldn't find a phone listing for Yates, so we reached out to him on Twitter. We didn't immediately get an answer. What Yates didn't know about the Airbnb listing was the owner only had the property three weeks, and the ad came from the previous owner. What really kills me is reviews. Memorable, highly recommend watching the sunset. We stayed in the sharecropper cabin and ate in the main house. Most of the reviews Yates cites, says the owner of Belmont, come from the property he owned in Arkansas, the Coulter Farmhouse, and not from Belmont. Brad Hauser admits his Belmont plantation house has darkness in its past, but he says he wants it to be a beacon for the future, a place that helps tell the story of civil rights. Any of us. Already, Hollywood has noticed, producing an episode at Belmont of the Women of the Movement on ABC. Hauser said in a statement, I intend to do all I can to right a terrible wrong and hopefully regain advertising on Airbnb so the Belmont can contribute to the most urgent demand for truth-telling about the history of not only the South, but the entire nation. The building in question sits behind the main house, just a few feet away. It's that one right there. Now, caretakers tell me that was never a slave quarters. Instead, it was a doctor's office. Some have also described it as a sharecropper's home. Not exactly a slave, according to Wikipedia, which points out the majority of sharecroppers were white. Be that as it may, compare this building to this actual sharecropper's quarters at Lake Providence, or even this commissary. It has significant differences. None of the slave housing remains. Video bloggers say the building at Belmont came from nearby Panther Burn. That is not original to the property. They brought that in from down the road about 5, 10 miles. Making its exact origin even murkier. And while the previous owner may have thought the idea of coming up with a backstory for what he dubbed a slave quarters and advertising it for rent may have sounded good, most of the rest of the world has in no uncertain terms decided it does not. Mr. Hauser says he has been in touch with Mr. Yates and the two of them have talked about how to move forward before more bloggers jump on the bandwagon and create more confusion. He hopes clearing the air will allow Belmont to resume telling its story in an honest and respectful way, giving us all something to learn from.